Daniel, I would love to get your your thought. We we have been talking a little bit about taxation policy and regulatory policy here. Uh, obviously, the big push in the last G7 meeting and the OECD has been to get a, a common tax rate, minimum tax rate, obviously, uh, to target uh, big tech and, and other multinational uh, enterprises. Uh, is this a good thing in your view? No, it's not a good thing. The, the, the best way for a poor country to stop being poor, or not, maybe not the best way, but an important way for a country to make itself richer as it develops is to have competitive taxes, particularly competitive corporate taxes. And the danger of this proposal, which comes in many forms, there's an OECD version of it, there's a UN version of it, you know, there's, it's, it's an idea that's been kicking around, the Biden administration obviously very keen on it. The danger of it is that it creates a high tax cartel and it makes it very difficult for a country to grow by making itself more competitive. Uh, look, we, we, we've, governments need revenue. We've got to tax. No one likes paying tax. We've got to get it from somewhere, right? Uh, but taxing, you know, we tax things that we don't like, right? If 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 tobacco taxes discourage smoking, and if carbon taxes discourage pollution, what do we think business taxes will do, right? If we if we if we want to encourage enterprise, this is a very bad way of going about it. And it's worth stressing. This may seem a really obvious point. It is an obvious point, but it, it can't be repeated too often. All taxes are paid by human beings. There is a temptation for politicians to say business taxes because that creates the impression that someone else is going to be paying it. But of course, a business is no longer, no more paying the business tax than, you know, our TV set is paying the license fee or your car is paying the petrol tax. All taxes fall on human beings. And, uh, and business taxes, to the extent that they fall on suppliers and customers, are a peculiarly regressive and harmful form of tax. They discourage the stuff that we like, which is transactions and, and economic growth, uh, and they encourage uh, forms of unearned wealth. So I, I, I am strongly against this idea. Uh, I'm not saying that we shouldn't find a way of taxing uh, tech companies. I mean, you, the, the, there can't be a, a complete exemption simply because there's a new technology, but the idea of a minimum global tax rate is only going to result in more and more taxes being harmonized. Obviously. It seems like it's an unstoppable force right now. That, as you said, the Biden administration has come around to it. Uh, you know, even the Irish government that would be the most likely to uh, dissent on this is uh, is burbling that it may not be such a bad thing and they could live with it. So uh, are, are, is this just going to happen, do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think they could, they could probably live with what, what's being watered down as the first version of it. But we know that it doesn't stop there. You, you empower these bureaucracies. They never say, oh, job done, let's disband ourselves, right? It only ever goes uh, in in one direction. And I'm afraid that let's be honest about this, the public mood is with more regulation. One of the very sad consequences among many of the lockdowns and the epidemic is that it's flicked switches in our brains. It has made us more demanding of big government. It's made us more illiberal. It's made us, if you like, uh, readier to put up with a, a measure of autocratic or authoritarian. rule. Um, because that's what happens. It's like a war, right? People, people just become if you like, warier, more scared, more inward looking. And just as after 1945, we found in the UK that the state was very reluctant to return the powers which it had seized on a supposedly contingent basis during the mobilization. So I'm afraid that as the threat of the virus recedes, as it becomes an endemic seasonal virus that we uh, live with, the appetite for big government is going to remain. And I'm afraid that the, the decades ahead are going to be pretty tough for those of us who believe in a small state and in free enterprise. I mean, you can make the argument that the tide uh, didn't uh, start to recede in the UK until Margaret Thatcher in, in, the, in the very late 70s. That was that. Uh, from Clement Attlee on, it was just, a, again, an unstoppable force. Uh, and we're facing the same thing in Canada as well. Yeah, I think you put that very well. I mean, the, the, the victory was in 1945. We had identity cards until 1952. We had food rationing until 1954. We had full conscription until 1960. And as you say, we had the economic package that had been put in, again, supposedly for a mobilized economy up until the 1980s. Indeed, when you look at healthcare and education, we still have large elements of it today, things that were brought in in wartime. And it wasn't just that the country 
uh, was prepared to put up with these things. The country was demanding it. That's right. Right. Uh, just as as now. We're going to have to deal with uh, the, the finances of this uh, TV station. We'll be right back with Daniel Hannon right after these commercial messages. Please stay with us.